Hello guys, good morning. So this is my new creative series and it's just really opening up my notebook to the inspiration that I come across on all things creativity when something matters or means to me and I'm thinking about different authors that give me something, different thoughts that I jot down during the week, really just passing everything on, keeping this cycle going because these are the things that help me and motivate me and inspire me and giving it back out to anyone that might need it or, or use it or who's feeling stuck or a bit unsure or needing a bit of motivation. That provides in turn this circle this cycle that then fuels back to me so it always means so much when I do hear back so here we go here are my notes for the last few days so kill your high standards so I wrote down demo doodle dally delineate dash destroy deliberate I sort of really just think about the d words and what are you trying to throw off this devil of perfection And instead to dance with that demon on your shoulder, you know, we always so often get crushed by this sense of perfection or maybe we know that there's something that we could be or that we could create and then we feel burdened by all the steps, we see how long the journey will be and it sort of makes us cower or sometimes we see someone who's on a similar journey and they just seem so far ahead and I think with creativity, it's so important to kind of throw out the future, to return to the now. You know, it's about that exchange that you're going through in this moment with yourself. Don't worry about the steps ahead. You know, all you need to do is to try and get to the next smallest thing. Do the next tiniest, smallest thing that will propel you. You know, it's all about creating these chains of meaning one by one. And, you know, one of the paradoxes is that, you know, in the arts, we often don't start from a point of simple joy or simple happiness. Very often we're starting precisely because we're in the opposite of that place or we know that there's something that we need, that we need to discover. And so we go on that journey to try and discover that next thing we need. So when I'm talking about killing your high standards, it's about like not being broken down by this illusory sense, perfection, start playing. It's about trying to return to the mind of a child and just creating, sometimes just letting the mind go, putting it aside altogether. So um, great quote from the poet William Stafford. This is where the thoughts came from. One should lower one's standards until there is no felt threshold to go over in writing. It's easy to write. You just have standards that inhibit you from writing. So he's just saying, you know, throw out these imaginary high standards and just get to the act of writing. Uh, You know, you inhibit yourself in so very many ways. And actually, you know, these things are not as hard as we make out. It's all about trying to get into the sense of flow. And anyway, this um, I find this um, quotation from this wonderful book that I always return to. Can you see that? So it's called Writing Tools by Roy Peter Clark. And it's just a book that I love so much. And so he has this 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 chapter um so it's tool 41 he's just talking about the nature of procrastination and he says the word procrastination comes from the latin word crass meaning tomorrow i.e putting it off tomorrow so procrastination is literally offsetting it from today and putting it on tomorrow and then we circle and we spiral in this spirit of procrastination and we never get something done but the lovely point that roy peter clark is making is about how do we reframe procrastination so he's talking about well look why not consider it as rehearsal you know like often we're procrastinating for a reason um okay sometimes we're not getting something done just because we really are doing nothing granted but the thing is is that we also have to listen to our spirit you know what is 
what is the stuff that we need you know we we need to be in interaction with the world and to be in this spirit of exchange and that is how um, you know we rehearse stuff so he's talking about not procrastination but thinking of it as rehearsal and he has a lovely metaphor which he talks about which is thinking about how a reporter works so a reporter needs to go out and he needs to have you know this is a news report he needs to go or you know he or she to go through different dead ends needs to be in life to open false corridors to get blocked to get doors shut and all the time it's just in this spirit so it's not he's he or she's not writing is actually interjecting discovering rehearsing as um, Roy Peter Clark would say and then once all the knowledge is accumulated that's when the action comes then there's the deadline and there's the pressure and you really have to get down to it and the thing that is so powerful for a reporter is a reporter has to do it they have this deadline so I think that trying to get into this spirit between being and doing being in the world but then really getting down to it is a really key question so one of the things that, that Roy Peter Clark writes and I, I really ascribe to this he says the key is to yeah, the key is to write rather than to wait and he recommends writing in the morning and I couldn't recommend this enough. I always take this hour in the morning, which I can consider my sort of self time, no matter how busy I am. And in it, I will write and I'm not trying to write loads. I'm just trying to read something, to think a little bit, to see if I can touch that spirit of the day. And, and then I sort of like get going, but the, the key isn't really what I write. The key is the ritual. So, in a way I start my day with my deadline and often that deadline is happening after what's happened the day before because often in that in that hour I'm thinking about what I've gone through the day before so anyway take it on to the next note so I've just been thinking about affirmation and the mental dungeons that we put ourselves in nowadays and it seems to me we're sort of becoming a profoundly guilt-ridden society and I think that we need to be conscientious about the tools that are in our armory or potential to us and I think that affirmation is something that is such a powerful tool or technique or way of cultivating in your mind so, uh, so I've got some notes here so affirmation is a courage to pierce through the dark so everything's foggy, everything's uncertain, you don't know what's going on, but you choose to affirm despite the darkness, despite the void, despite the abyss. And what this does is it pierces through, it creates a light, a sense of intentionality. Why are we so damn afraid to affirm these days? You, you, it's almost as if we have this expectancy that it's just going to be bad and that it's not going to work out for us and we kind of get into this cycle of negativity and there's negativity there's negativity all around us you know, look i've been through the darkness i've been on my knees i've been in negativity i've been in depression i've been through panic attacks but one of the key things that you have to forge through this is a belief in life despite how bad it gets to have a reckless faith to go into the future and the thing is is it's you have to almost consider it like a type of arrogance that it's let me re, re, redefine that it is arrogant to think that it's just not going to work out for you there are good things that happen in the world and there is nothing pre-written or pre-described or presuppose that it's not going to get better for you or that it's not going to work out for you or that the work that you put into your soul and your spirit and your life will not lead to somewhere new so it's absolutely essential that you embrace the spirit of affirmation and it's not even about trying to con yourself that it's going to work. We all know it's going to be different as we set out. It's not going, you know, the map never leads to the place that we set out to make. Now, all of the motivational people will all be like, yeah, you visualize it and then you get there. It's absolute nonsense. It's not how it works out. For most of us, us normal people, we have dreams and we aspire towards them. We have the affirmation of someone that we're trying to get to. But life then gets in the way and it redirects your path. Does a river have an intention as it comes down the mountain no it's channeled into different areas and sometimes the place that you go is somewhere that you never expected and the actual things that you're working on are 
point into a different direction. They are, they, their, their course has changed. And that's the wonder of it. But all the tools that you learn become a part of your armory, a part of your tool bag. So nothing in with this perspective is not worthwhile. So even if you're, you know, let's say you're on a course or you're on a university course or something's just not ticking for you, stick it out, get to the end of it. If that's what feels right, if you're early on it and it doesn't feel right, then just change. But remember that whatever you're learning, even if it's hard, even if it's difficult, it becomes a part of the path for you. It becomes a part of your knowledge. It becomes part of your wisdom. And it's so essential to make these mistakes or to go down these lost paths, because if not, what the hell are you going to pass on to other people? I mean, come on. I, I sometimes look at these uh, sort of, you know, teenagers or 20, uh, people in their early 20s with this profound success. And I'm like, man... I feel so blessed that that didn't happen to me, that I didn't have that wild um, success that I, you know, as a young man, I wanted, you know, that was that sort of alphaism that a lot of young males have, you know, you want to go out, you want to prove yourself and you want to be in the world and you want the validation. I got the opposite of that. I had to really struggle in every single um, part of my journey has taken work and consistent work and hard work but it does lead somewhere and I thank, I thank the stars for my failures and for the difficult parts and for all the ways that life has shaped me. You know, I think sometimes of the cliff next to the ocean and the ocean is just so consistently coming in and eroding it, but it erodes it into this beautiful shape and that's like you next to life just being there and being shaped into something that you didn't necessarily intend to form, but which becomes proud and dignified as a result of standing next to the ocean until, of course, one day we slip into the ocean and something else happens. Um, so, yeah, this affirmation shaping reality to not be the victim of destiny and going around with this thought that, everything's pre-written for you that it won't work out just got to snap out of this you have to have the courage to affirm recklessly with faith and every day you try to live up to yourself something that i think about is having a sort of minimum basic expectation of myself what are the it's not about having the absolute highest expectation which so many of these sort of motivational videos and online gurus will tell you no it's about a minimum expectation what do I need to do today to live up to myself? That is the aspiration, to live up to yourself and not to feel crushed at the end of the day because you've been completely ridiculous and absurd in the amount of things that you thought of yourself because that creates a cycle of negativity and that cycle of negativity breaks down your capacity to affirm and you have to keep affirming every day even when you wake up and you're not feeling it and you're hurting and you're in pain and nothing's working out that's when you need your affirmation who are you where are you going to trusting i dot 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 whoever you are will do this today or i will get there or i will create this and i will not let the fates get in the way um so i just wrote a little mantra fail fail forward fail fail forward um and i think affirmation also helps build mental resilience by being consistent irrespective of how you feel so yeah you need to build mental resilience it doesn't come overnight but I think the affirmation is about saying to the dark that you won't be crushed by it. You won't be battered by it. Sure, sometimes it's going to hurt like hell and sometimes you're, yeah, you're not going to know what to do at all. And sometimes you do get stuck. That's not a problem. That's part of the journey. But you build mental resilience through the act of affirmation. Okay, so that's my thoughts on affirmation for today.